Hi everyone, I'm Regina Sellers and I'm the creator of Provo the Hand. We are now so proud to say we are manufactured right here in the great USA. We are very proud of that fact. Um, this is a bow that I posted um, in the group about a week ago. Thank y'all so much for such kind words. And I'm now, I'm now gonna make a, a how-to video for you. So um, this is the bow. I'm gonna turn around in just a moment. We're gonna shoot from right over my shoulder so you can have the best view possible. I hope you enjoy. So let's begin. The bow recipe for this absolutely gorgeous package or gift bow is row D. We're going to be using fingers one, two, three, four, and five, right and left, and we're going to wrap each dowel twice. That's going to give us a double terry bow. Uh, a regular terry bow, you would go around each finger or dowel. Um, I normally call these the fingers of the hand. This is Probo the hand. This is it's called it the hand because it's holding everything for you. And I normally call these the fingers. So anyway, uh, we're going to be going around each finger twice. So that is going to give us the double terry bow. Please go to my website, probothehand.com. Um, select video and you can just watch tons of different uh, videos that we have made through the years. Uh, please enjoy the very slow instructional video on the original Terry Bow. Thank you, Terry Marshall with Millendale Designs. <laughs> She's the lady who came up with the bow to begin with. Okay, she made it on the Pro Bow. So that was our collaboration. So anyway, here we go. Let's begin. I'm going to start with a very small um, little ribbon. Uh, of course, all the ribbon came from Hobby Lobby. Um, so here we go. Let's get started. We're going to measure our tail. Y'all, I've kind of do this a little different than I did in the beginning. I, I have just pretty much discovered that I like my tails to be just a tad bit just a tad longer than the loop that I make on each uh, finger. So now I use the finger as as my measurement. I, I used to come out this way and then I and then I would always have to kind of cut back. So I just kind of started doing it this way now. So I want that tail to be just a tad longer than the loop. So that's why I'm doing it that way. So anyway, let's pinch. Y'all remember to make pretty, pretty little gathers, no fold overs. Your, um, your loop just won't fluff out pretty that way if you just fold it over. 26 gauge wire, y'all, 26 gauge wire. Anything heavier than that, it just uh, makes it too difficult to manipulate the wire, okay? This is all that's, this is all that's necessary. I use the smallest um wire that i can get because you just want it to just flip around just easy for you the first thing that you need to remember and you can clearly see my uh spool uh, of course the spool holder comes with the pro boat that's an absolute must the first thing that you need to remember whenever you, okay i've put the wire on you just need to remember not to twist your wood. If, if, you're, if you're not paying attention and you twist this all around, you will end up with twists the, the entire time you're making your bow. You just, you don't want to do that. So whenever you start, you just want to remember to not have a twist from your spool holder to your, to your uh, spool, okay? And then that way you won't have any twist in your ribbon as you go, okay? Uh, just remember that this is the top of the bow. This is the bottom of the bow. So when you attach your ribbon to the spool holder, I I'm sorry, to the bow maker, you want your ribbon facing up because this is the top of your bow. Okay, so here we go. Take your wire, slide it into the little slit, and then wrap that around there. 
Okay, leave just a little bitty piece so you can come back and find the end of your wire. Let me change hands. I had my hand in the way. Just make sure you leave just the tiniest little piece sticking out so that when you go back, you can find the end of your wire easily. Now you're going to take your bottom wire, go around your nail just once. Y'all, that's all that's necessary. Okay, so that's just a couple little things that you remember. Um, we are now making what we call Regina's Tips. Just, let's say you used your bow maker in the, for the 4th of July and you made a great big bow to put on your mailbox. Okay, and now it's Christmas and now you're, you're starting and you go, oh, how was I supposed to start again? And oh gosh, what, what video do I go to find that in? Please go to Regina's Tips. Um, we've broken down every step. So if you have just forgotten how to start, you can go to Regina's Tips, and then, and then it'll it'll just be it, y'all. They're all real short, and it just it and it just tells you how to start. Okay, how to start different things. So um, if there's anything that you see in Regina's Tips, and and you, you want something else, please just contact me. I'll make any any video you want. Okay, anything that you want to see, please contact me. We'll make the video. We'll put it there. Okay, another thing I can tell you, if you see a bow somewhere and you can't figure it out, y'all, that's how the Leon bow came about and several other bows. That's just the one that comes to mind at the time. There was a bow he just couldn't figure out on his pro bow. He sent the picture to me. I was like, oh, this is a great idea. I made a video. I call it the Leon bow now. And uh, so that's just a service that we offer. Okay, I just wanted to throw that in here at the beginning. Okay, so here we go. Y'all, we're here to help you. And never, ever hesitate to, to call me and ask me a question. Okay, there are no stupid questions. It just means I haven't explained well enough. Okay, so anyway, here we go. I'm going to hold my thumb here just to kind of keep this in place. Y'all, in all my videos, I show my hand just like this. These three fingers are guiding my ribbon. And, and you'll see, you see how I hold it? And this finger just becomes my guide. I just slide it through my finger, and that's all there is. Hold your finger here. Um, I always, you'll see in my videos, I, I put my finger here. Uh, I want to, I, I come in sideways. I want to keep the bottom edge of my ribbon uh, showing. Here is my t pinch and my twist. Make a pretty little gather, okay? You can just hold it there with your finger. And here I go. I'm using my finger as my guide and I'm dropping it over. Y'all, this is as hard as it gets. This is all there is to this, okay? Now, the reason why, let's do this again. See my finger is here. And now that I'm making a pretty little pinch, there's my twist. Y'all, I got a question from a little a, a lady the other day, and she says, okay, do I pinch before? Um, no, do I twist before the pinch, after the pinch? She was confused. You pinch and, tw and you twist the pinch, okay? You're going to pinch a ribbon, and the twist, whenever you... You, you, get, you gather up your ribbon, there's your pinch, and then you twist, all at the same point, okay? There's no before or after, okay? So that was a question I got the other day. Uh, every time I do another video, if I've gotten questions, I try to answer it in the next video. Okay, doke? So there you go. So here's my finger, smooth, easy glide. Let me, I'm gonna turn that up a little bit, okay? Smooth, easy glide, drop it over. My ribbon has slid off of my spool. I want to keep that on. Okay, finger here, put it in my finger. There's my pinch, y'all. We all know in bow making, it's all about the pinch and twist. Let's make it absolutely as easy as possible. Let the bow maker hold everything for you. What is so incredibly hard about bow making is keeping all of this straight, keeping the stack of your bow straight. I used to give classes. I used to own a Christmas store. We quit giving classes because I had ladies throwing ribbon around, stomping on ribbon on the floor, crying, and they wouldn't come back to the store because they were embarrassed. The vast majority of ladies' hands aren't strong enough to hold all of this, especially when you see how many 
uh, ribbon that we're going to use. So, get you a bow maker. Let, let it hold it. Ho I hope you choose my bow maker. Um, let it hold the ribbon for you, okay? Because what Provo the hand does, you get the spool holder, it holds your spools of ribbon also. And you're gonna, your ribbon from your hand to your spool is never going to get twisted. You will never have spools rolling all over the floor. You won't deal with twisted ribbon. Uh, all these dowels, and I, ha and I have some people that said, oh, I'm so intimidated by this. All of these rows, that's simply to measure your ribbon. That's all they're there for, okay? If you want to make, if you want to make a tree topper and you want big loops, so there it measures your loop, okay? That's all it is. You want to make smaller bows, that's what row A is for. You want small, bring it in. You want large, bring it out, okay? That's all that is. This base finger right here is the magic, okay? This becomes your hand what you have always been trying to hold in your hand, all your pinching and your twisting happens right there. That's where the magic is, right there, because it's gonna hold everything for you, okay? Y'all, that's as simple as it gets. It's just that easy. Okay, the next thing is the helping hand. Um, I am a florist. Back in the day when I took uh, floor school, we had to make bows by hand and every loop had to be wired in place. At the time, I thought it was overkill. I didn't think that was quite necessary, but I had to learn it that way. And now I'm glad because now I am going to, I still use my helping hand. That's what I call it. It's just my name for it. Um, other people have other names for it. That's, y'all can call anything you want. It's, um, I'm not the bow police or the wire police. <laughs> But I call it the helping hand because it's going to give me a helping hand, okay? I'm going to slide this piece of wire. See how I just drop it? I'm dropping it right through the middle. Again, 26 gauge wire. I'm going to pull this piece of wire to me. I am making my ends even. I, I, I use pre-cut wire. I just, I just prefer to paddle wire to do this. I like my wire nice and straight. I'm going to go around once. Why do I have to use uh, the helping hand wire? You have to use the helping hand wire when you're making any kind of bow like this because I'm getting ready to cut this ribbon because this is my other tail. Boom. I cut it right there. If I didn't have my helping hand wire, I would have nothing holding my bow together. So that's why the helping hand wire is an absolute must in this type of ribbon. I've cut my ribbon, now it's all held in place, and I can begin with my next piece of ribbon. Y'all fall in love with the Terry Bow. You can go to Pinterest, type in Terry Bow, and see just how many uh, gorgeous uh, bows have been made, have been made and, and put on wreaths, okay? Um, so there you go, there's my measurement. Y'all, that's everything that there is. Let me turn this over. Wasn't paying attention. I was gonna have, I was gonna have um, tangled up ribbon there. See how I'm making a nice little gather? I'm gonna sit it here. Pretty little gather, okay? I'm gonna take my 26 gauge wire and I see how I'm just going up and down and I'm gonna tighten that and I'm gonna go around once. That's all, okay? Now, it's wired in place. It's not gonna move on me. Y'all one-handed bow making. Easy, smooth glide. Look at that. I'm gonna use my finger. There's my pinch. For all of my left-handed friends, uh, I made a video for the left-handers. All I did was put my spool hold on the left on the left side, because it's in bow making. It's right and left, up or down, or whatever which way you want to call it. So for the left-handers, that's all you have to do is put your spool holder on the left side. I know visually in your brain it's going to work better. I use both hands pretty much, pretty much equally, and so it, I made the video. Really, was no problem. Okay. 
So here's our pinch and the twist. Y'all, that's all there is to it. All you're doing is moving ribbon around a bow maker and it's really doing all of the work for you. It's holding everything. If you've never made a bow before, you could open this bow maker up. You could follow my very slow instructional video. You could make this bow. It would, you could have it look exactly like mine the absolute very first time. There's the pinch. There's the twist because there's absolutely nothing to it. Okay? Y'all, this is a great, great way to use up all of those bits of ribbon that you have on a gazillion spools. If you're anything like me, <laughs> you have lots of spools of ribbon uh, sitting all over the place with just a little bit of ribbon left. Can't make an entire bow. Y'all, please go and check out. It was a Halloween bow. I used 13 different ribbon in the bow. And I especially like it. I think it really looks good for Halloween. And uh, I, used, I used 13 different ribbon in the bow. I used up all kind of scraps. And it, looked, it just looked fabulous on my project that I was doing. Okay? Of course, it was a Terry bow, but I, um, I really changed it up just a whole lot. But there's a video on that. Okay? So do you see how I'm just doing the same thing over and over again? You wire your ribbon in place, and, and you just go to the next dowel. That's, that's all there is to this. This is incredibly easy. Uh, one of the things that I want you to remember is, see, I want you to notice now. You see how I did not go up and down my dowel? That's what is so incredibly hard about making a bow in your hand is keeping the stack straight. The stack is going to come straight out, okay? Every time I'm pitching, pinching, and twisting, I am pinching and twisting right over the one before it, okay? And my stack of my bow is going to come straight out. That is what is so incredibly hard about making a bow in your hand, okay? Now, you, now you're just going to let the bow maker hold it for you, see? There's my pinch. There's my twist. Am I, let's see. Am I just talking too much? Am I paying attention to what I'm doing? Let's see. What do I have there? Oh, okay. I've, I've lost count. I'm, I got busy talking. It, because of the edging, I'm going to make sure. Yeah, that's right. Because of the edging on there, I thought I had gone over it already. Okay, here we go. I was like, oh, I saw that tail. And I was like, no, that's not where I want to end. And there's your pinch and your twist. Okay, so far, I have only used one one-inch ribbon. Y'all, I know it's one-inch ribbon can be one and a quarter, one and a half. Two-inch ribbon can be two and a half inches. It can be two and a quarter, whatever. If you follow me, I refer to all of it as quarter inch, one inch, two inch, whether it's a little more or less than that, okay? So that's just kind of how I refer to it. This is, I'm saying it's one inch, but it, it might be a little bit more than that, but that's just how I refer to it. And we're gonna cut it, and that's it. See how the stack of your bow, yeah, I'm gonna get really close to the camera. I want you to notice the stack of your bow, and you see how every pinch and twist is right on top of the other. That is what is crucial. There's the stack of your bow. The bow maker is holding everything for you. Okay, doke. Can you imagine making this in your hands? When I owned the Christmas place, I used to have to do this. It was horrible. <laughs> I used to, I got to where I despised bow making, and now it's, at, well, in fact, I had a hand injury. I, I can't hold ribbon in my hands any longer. My hand just isn't strong enough, okay? So, let's go ahead and let's put our, 
a stub tail. Y'all, don't do a really deep, deep dovetail. Kind of do a shallow dovetail, especially on this 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 ribbon that's not terribly, terribly expensive. Um, you you want to kind of do a shallow dovetail. You could do it even a little less than that. Then your points won't want to curl on you. Okay, so you're going to want to do a shallow dovetail. If you have a really heavy wired ribbon, you can get away with a little um, deeper dovetail than that. Okay, so here I'm going to give you a, um, I'm going to show you a little something else. Okay, let's pinch this up. I'm going to show you something else that you can do here. I think you're going to really like it. Okay, you see how I've just really gathered that up? You can really see this closely here, I do believe. See all my little gathers, okay? So when I turn this over, it's gonna automatically poof out for, for me. I have people call me all the time and go, how in the world do you get that to do that every time? It's because of this technique. If you, if you do this, you see how that automatically goes flat? It, it automatically goes flat if you're just, if you're just folding over and stuff. Your, your, your loops of your bow are going to be much flatter, okay, as opposed to if you just take that moment, it makes all the difference in the world. Pop it out. See the difference? It's already going out. It's going to make a beautiful fluffy bow, okay? We're going to sit this in place, my nice, carefully gathered ribbon. I'm going to wire it in place. You can see how incredibly easy that was, only using 26 gauge wire. Just turn once, that's all that's necessary, and there's all it is. Here's my little gather. I want a pretty gather. Just take that extra moment, make a pretty gather. Your bow will fluff so much easier, so much nicer. On this particular ribbon, I'm going to wire this one each time because the backing of it, like I said, this is Hobby Lobby ribbon. This is not terribly expensive ribbon. The backing of this ribbon is kind of like, it's kind of a little plastic, okay? That wouldn't want to sit there very easy so I'm going to wire that one every time and see how see how I've made sure there that I've had a pretty gather you see how I kind of push that up I already I know that whenever I'm fluffing that's going to come out beautifully right there okay drop it over so here Y'all, you have to eyeball this, okay? Just keep it as straight as you possibly can. Right there, that's where I want my little gather. Gathering it up. So there's my gather, and now I am pinching slab dab in the middle of that gather. And now I'm sitting it there. I'm gonna sit it. See how I pulled up the top and the bottom? I'm starting my fluffing already. Be okay, so this is the next little trick. Because this is really stiff ribbon, and I want two two loops at this position. What I and it's, so it's going to be a little bit. It's going to be difficult because of the texture of this ribbon. Not a problem at all. Look what you do. Take your ribbon, pull it off the dowel, move it forward. Don't you love it? <laughs> now. Use that dowel all over again, just like you used it the first time. You don't have to worry because all of this is tied in, is wired in place. There is your pinch. Let's wire it in in place with our helping hand wire. Y'all fall in love with your helping hand wire. You're just going to love it. Okay? Now, what am I going to do? I have no worries because this is wired in place. Nothing's going to move on me. 
it is just sturdy. It is staying right there. I can just lift this off the dowel, move it out of the way. I don't have to go over it. The, the smaller ribbon, it was very easy to go over because it was softer, it was smaller. This is a very stiff ribbon, so this is what I want to do. Get that off, drop that over. Here is our pinch. Here is that twist. Y'all, I twist, I pinch up. I, so I eyeballed it, that's where it is. So that's where I'm starting my pinch, my pretty little gather. And now it's gathered and I twist, right slap dab in the middle of my gather. And it's just a half twist and I just set it there. Okay, and I'm gonna wire that in place. I'm not going to go very deep on my uh, on my um, dovetail, and we're done. Next ribbon. One one ribbon to go. See how incredibly neat. Look how incredibly neat that looks. All the um, all of the stacks, all the pinches and twists are are ex exactly right over. Um, the previous, if you look really closely, you can see that I have tended to pull a little bit to the right. Y'all, like I said, you eyeball this. Try not to get it off any more than that. This is really not going to make any difference and all of you would never know, okay? But I can see when I'm looking closely here and I tended to just move just a hair a little to the right on this particular ribbon, it's not going to matter at all. So that's kind of, I, I noticed it and I wanted you to see that. And I want you to know that that's not going to matter if you're off that much, okay? Because you're really just eyeballing here. But try not to get it any more off than that. Whenever I come with my next ribbon, I'm going to try to pull it back in on my next ribbon. I'm not going to keep going over and over, okay? Okie doke. Our last ribbon. I'm not going to go very deep on my dovetail. There's my measurement. Y'all, this is just so easy. It's just, it's just a matter of pinching up ribbon and letting the spool holder just, I'm sorry I keep saying that, and letting the um, bow maker just hold everything for you. Th I mean, this makes it so... Every person, anyone can now make absolutely perfect boutique, boutique quality, uh, florist quality bows because this is the hand. This is the hand. It's measuring your ribbon. This is the magic right here. This right here becomes your hand. This is what you would have been trying to hold in your own hand. And now you can see that the bow maker is holding it right there for you. Okie doke. Go over. See how I'm making just a pretty, pretty little gather. I'm going to hold it right there. I'm going to go over and I'm going to come back. There's, there's my measurement. There's my pinch and the twist. I gathered right slap dab in the middle of that little gather. That's where I twist it. I'm going to sit it here and getting kind of short on my little helping hand wire there. There it is. And I tie it in place. And look what I'm doing. You see how I said I was going to kind of swing it back this way? I'm kind of eyeballing it back this way. I kind of swung over to the right. Y'all, I kind of I kind of did that on purpose. And I, I do that all the time in, in a video. I'll Because I want you to see that, okay, I did that. I kind of swung it a little bit to the right. I, I, I'm not dead, dead on. I'm pulling it back. And I want you to see once I gather, once I fluff this, you won't be able to tell at all. But 
you know, try to get it absolutely as straight as you possibly can. Okay, doke. I'm going to lift this off. Lift this off. You can do that. You move this out of your way. Just move it forward. And um, because the bow maker is doing all the work for you. It's holding everything for you. If the baby cries, phone rings, you need to go do something else. You need to go um, cook supper. Then let it sit here. The hand is holding everything for you. And now you're finished with whatever you're doing. You're coming back and now you're going to finish up. Okay. There you go. There's your gather. And there it's holding. And see how I've pulled it back? I pulled it back in line. I'm getting it back in line, okay? Y'all, the reason why my ribbon is twisted, you see how this ribbon is twisted here? It's because it popped off. These are all, these are all new. It, it popped off on one of the pulls. It did it on almost every one. <laughs> Okay, if you're wondering why that happened, it, it popped off my spool and I just didn't stop and put it back on. But it only popped off once and I knew it wasn't going to give me a problem. So I just didn't worry about it. If it, if it, if it would have kept popping off and on a new spool, it'll, it'll do that. It does it a lot. On it, I would have stopped and, and fixed it, but not in this case. I knew it wasn't going to give me a problem. I think it yeah, it popped off at the, on, on my very first one, and I stopped and fixed it. So that's, that's just entirely up to you. If that um, twisting ribbon bothers you, it makes me crazy, okay? So there we go, y'all. Our bow is made. Now, here is the helping hand wire. And I get people contact me all the time, and they go, what in the world do I do with the helping hand wire? Well, you just don't have to, please, please don't overthink it. That's not a thing. You just, I'm just going to, and y'all, please don't just keep going round and round and round. It's wire. If you go round and round and round, just 10, 15 times, it'll break. Okay? So I only went around about two or three times max. That's all that's needed. Okay? And I'm just going to get it out the way. Now I'm going to come up here and get my top wire. See how I left that little piece sticking out so I could get it? Y'all, don't take your wire and just jerk it up. If you do, you see that right there? Just slowly undo this, because it'll not. Just slowly pull it up. Get it out of the slot. Y'all, I always take my top wire off first. And now, before, before I close this up, y'all, I always take it and I push it in if I can. Now, don't let this all, when I'm pushing in, I'm still making sure that every one of my stacks stays right on top of the other. I'm not, I don't, I don't push so hard that I make one, one twist flop over the other one. That, that would just ruin the whole effect. But you can see I've moved it a little. I've tightened it up, but I always hold my hand behind my base dowel. Okay. Because I'm, I'm holding my hand and I'm pushing toward my hand. Okay, I, I don't want to, I don't want to break the thing. Okay, but I pushed in, I'm, I'm pushing pretty hard and I've moved it a little, I've tightened it up a little. Okay, and now I'm coming and I always come and I hold my, my top wire. I'm getting my bottom wire. Please, y'all, I have people, I gave, I give classes, y'all, and people go right over their finger and they wire their finger to their bow. Please don't do that. <laughs> Please make sure you go behind your finger, okay? Now, pull tightly, twist. That's it. And your bow is finished. And now, I, I see people, and they sit here and they start doing stuff with their wire. It almost looks like they're doing macrame. Um, it's, please don't, that's, y'all, this is all that's necessary, okay? And I do not cut my wires, okay? We're done. The bow is finished. Let's get it off. That is what your finished bow is supposed to look like. I want you to see here, that's how kind of off I was. That's 
perfectly fine. It's, you're not going to be able to tell it at all. Do not worry because I have people send me pictures like this constantly. That's why I kind of make sure I get off a little bit in a video because I want you to see once this is fluffed, it's going to make no difference whatsoever. But please don't try to get off any more than that. Okay? Now let's go to the fluff box. Okay? Y'all, the eye hook, there's a, it's a, it's opened. We open the eye hooks. I've seen people that get their fluff box and they're still trying to thread their wire through this. The eye hook is opened. Make sure that the opening of your eye hook is away from your nail. And then all you have to do, look, I'm going to do it this way so you can clearly see. All you have to do with your wire and just slide it into the eye hook. Everything, every little step, you want it just as easy and fast as possible. Okie doke. And here we go. When I'm fluffing a terry bow, I always start at the bottom. And what we're going to do is basically make X's. Okay? Or close to it. On a single terry bow, it would be just simply an X. On, on a double terry bow, what I'm going to do is I'm going to open these loops. Look, you see, how, you see how that just poofed out? Look how poofed out my loop is without doing anything. That's because I gathered instead of folding. See that? Very important. Okay, I'm going to put this tail here. And I'm just going to put a little sass on the end of it. See how it kind of flipping up the bottom? Okay, see how those loops just go whoop? That's how you achieve a beautiful bow quite easily. Okay, I want you to see. See where that tail is? Let's see, I'm not, I think I'm not on camera. See where the tail is? See it? I just want to make sure that that tail on this side is completely opposite of that tail on that side. And if you keep, so we're gonna stack each row this way. And if you do this whenever you're finished, your bow will be perfect and you won't have to foo-foo it a lot. And if y'all are just watching me, y'all, that's my word, foo-foo. This is what I'm doing right now. I call this foo-fooing, I'm foo-fooing. I'm foo-fooing this ribbon. Y'all, make your ribbon do what you want it to do, pull it where you want it. That's it. The reason why Look how, look how beautiful that is. Look at those big old loops. That's because I wired them in place and I gathered, I didn't fold. Great, huh? Okay, that's that, that's that row. We're gonna go to our next row, which is our pink. So here is two loops. So I wanna put a tail. I'm going to pull the tail over this way and I'm gonna put the tail between my two loops. See how see how that's wanting to just come up? Y'all, when you fluff a terry bow, what you want to do is pull up. Everything pulls upward. You don't pull everything straight out. And you'll see that as more as when as as we go. But you see how you see how from the from the center you can clearly see, see the pretty little gathers there and they're wanting to come up. That's bec that's because I gathered, I didn't fold over. If you fold over, you're gonna have a flat bow. Okay, so I have, oh wait, wait, let's, let's see. So, my tail is coming between two loops, so now I'm gonna take a loop and put it over the tail. Okay, and that is just how you fluff. See how, see how beautiful that just wants to open? That's because I gathered. So that's where that one's going to go. Let's see, where is this one going to go? That, that, one. that one there and there. This one I'm just going to pull over here. Because this is this side of the bow. I still have the other side of the bow to do. Y'all, work from the center. Go all the way to the center. If you need to adjust your ribbon in any way, Go to the dead center, 
open it, adjust. Look how that's one to just poof up. That is what you want to happen in a terry bow or a double terry bow. I could have done a triple terry bow. Okay, here is my two loops. Okay, so I know I'm gonna pull the tail between these two loops. And just sit it between. And just put a little sass on the end. Just sass it up just a little bit. Okay. And now here's two loops. I'm going to put two loops opposite them. See the two loops there? So my two loops that are on this side, I'm just going to put these two loops completely opposite of them. I can just put them like this. If you start from the bottom and just start, you have to pay attention on this, of where you put your loops and your tails. But if you keep going between, between each time, put a tail between two loops or loops between a tail, and you stack up that way, it's going to be perfect when you finish. Let's get this up out of the way because I want y'all to see. I'm going to hold it up. I want y'all to see what I've done here. And you can make little adjustments. I'm going to pull this over just a hair, okay? You just use the loops underneath as, as your guide, okay? Okay. See that on the first ribbon tail, across from it is the tail. I open two loops on this side and two loops on that side. These two are a little bit more open on this side. You can adjust that. We, we could come over here and kind of pull that. You can adjust a little. Okay, see how I kind of pulled them into place? You want your distance between them to be just about the same. You see, I can pull these two kind of this way. Just kind of have a look as you go. Okay, you see? So here's the tail, tail, and I have just about the same difference between those two loops and these two loops, okay? Same thing here. I had, I went to the next level. I had two loops, so I put a tail between it. I had two loops, so I put the tail. And then what did I do? I put a, I put a loop on each side. So a loop and a loop and a loop and a loop. And then that's the effect that you get. And that is how you make a double terry bow. Super, super easy. Okay? You just have to pay, you have to pay a little attention to how you just, it's the placement of your loops and tails. Okay? It's the look. It's, it's, a, it's a look that you're looking for. Okay, so here are two loops. I'm on my next, I'm on my next row. So here are two loops. So on this little ribbon, I'm just gonna open this up. I'm gonna make sure that the tail goes right here and see how I'm gonna start. I'm gonna almost start just pulling straight up. This is not heavily wired ribbon. Um, what I may do on this one, I'm probably gonna let it fall just a little on top of, let's see, on top of that tail, that's better. On top of this loop, you can make, let me pull this over a little bit. There, it's gonna go where I want. This is only glittered. It's only glittered. This it really doesn't have any wire at all. It's only heavily glittered, but I wanted to use it to show you how you could make ribbon behave. And you see, I'm pulling it up. It's wired enough to make it kind of stiff. And I'm just gonna let the edge just kind of sit there right on that loop. And that's going to just look as pretty as it can be, just sitting right there, okay? I'm even going to pull this one over just a little. See how you can kind of adjust as you go? Okay. Let's see. Two loops right here. Two, two loops. That's where I want the tail to be, and I'm just going to open this. Y'all, I'm, pu I'm pulling these almost straight up. That's the key to a terry bow. Once you start getting it, you, once you start getting into the top, into the, your top levels, 
you're gonna see I'm going almost just straight up with my ribbon barely going out at all okay let's give this let's kind of pop this tail up a little bit here give it something to kind of sit on let's pop let's round that up because that is not wired ribbon but I wanted you to see how you could use non-wired ribbon and you see how I'm going to come back here we're going to fufu a little bit more we're going to give this a little support there fufu them all up it's going to be beautiful next row y'all we're almost done okay this on this row the tail the tail is here so I want to make sure I pull this tail over here so I'm just going to grab it and pull it over here pull it in this direction I'm going to go almost straight up with it. Just put a little flare right there on the end. And let my two loops. I want a loop coming out right here in this little spot right here. Kind of just look down in your bow and you just kind of decide. Let's see. This one's going to pull a little easier this way, I believe. Yep. But see how I'm going almost straight up? Y'all, this is, this is Hobby Lobby ribbon, and y'all all know it's not, it's not the most expensive ribbon in the world. Um, it's not heavily wired, but I wanted you to see just how beautiful you could still make a bow be. Um, y'all, if I, I'm just, I'm going real slow here and doing all this talking, uh, I, and y'all must think, oh, good Lord, does she really take that much time to make every bow? I would never do that. Y'all, once you get the hang of this, I can make these in minutes. And I'm sling, believe me, I'm slinging this box around. So don't be, don't be concerned about that, uh, how long it's going to take you. Once you get the hang of it, I, like I said, I, I, can just, I can just sling these little bows out. And I love doing this. Um, I have these. I, on almost all my gift packages because it re once like I said once you get the hang of it I mean you can just fly through this and you can use up just because this isn't you and this isn't very long pieces of ribbon at all okay so you can just please go in and get all the all of those uh, rolls of ribbon that you have just a little bit left on and make beautiful this is a double terry bow you can do this you can do this uh and you would have just had one loop of each i just i just did this because i wanted to it was just the look i wanted it was a, a really special gift that was going to a friend and her favorite color was rose gold so that's why i chose to do double loops okay like i said please go to my website and enjoy the video on how to make a singletary bow. Okay, and you'll see just how incredibly easy this is and how beautiful they come out. And okay, you see that's that's my top wire here. And look, I'm just kind of moving it around. I'm kind of opening it, going straight up. See how everything, it starts just going almost straight up. This is an extremely dimensional bow, nothing flat about this. And that's it, guys. Once you get the little technique down, nothing to it, you'll be making terry bows, double terry bows. I might even try a triple terry bow. Who knows? <laughs> Y'all, I love playing with ribbon. Okay? And you see, I, I need to stop, and I always have to tell myself, okay, Regina, stop. And there is your beautiful double terry bow. Okay? Very, very easy to do. And I think this is absolutely gorgeous. Believe me, when I gave the gift, I got lots of oohs and ahs. Okay? So, there's the bow. Okay, I have people that ask me constantly, how do you get, now, now what? Well, you know, how do you attach this to your package? So, here we go. I'm going to show you. I'm, gonna, I'm unwiring this from my fluff box. Look, I'm going to slide it right off, slide it right off the fluff box because the, now look at that. 
Look how that's sitting there. Isn't it gorgeous? Okay. Now, what I'm going to do is carefully pick up my wire. Let me just make sure I'm on screen. Carefully pick up my wire. And you see, that's one of my shortest pieces of, of wire right there. I'm going to cut off all my wire right there. Just cut it off. Okay. Now, I have four pieces of wire right here. I want two going one way into the other. All right. Just like that. You see how I have two and two? Two and two. Okay. Keep that in mind. Two and two. See how nothing moved? Beautiful. And y'all, this is not expensive ribbon. Just imagine what you could do with a really expensive ribbon that's heavily wired. Okay. Here is my package. I absolutely fell in love with this. Uh, of course, this is Hobby Lobby wrapping paper. And the reason why I love it so here's my roll of wrapping paper. I absolutely love Hobby Lobby wrapping paper because it has the lines on the back. And it's just, let me, let's see. See how you can see the lines? I, I, I'm, I hope you can see the lines. Anyway, it has the lines on the back so you can cut real straight. And I love it. And it's very high quality. Um, y'all, my fluff box. I want y'all to see my fluff box. My fluff box is wrapped because this is just wood, okay? You can buy a fluff box from our website, okay? Our website, probothehand.com. I don't open a bow without my, without my fluff box any longer uh, because, so, because I can use both hands, okay? But this is, this is a, a block of wood. You're going to get your eye hook. You're going to get two nails, one to use and one to lose, okay? <laughs> Y'all, this is wrapped with Hobby Lobby with that, with that paper, Y'all can see how I just sling this around. I go to different shows. It gets thrown in my car. I, I rewrap this about once a year, okay? And that's all. So get you some high, if, you, if, if um, you really want to wrap, you can see how beautiful the ends do, okay? I, I'm, okay, I'm doing a Hobby Lobby wrap, uh, gift wrapping pa paper commercial here, but I just love this stuff. It really holds up. <laughs> If that matters to you. Anyway, so here's my package. The white paper. So that was the white paper. And then look, y'all, I found this. I found this on a roll. And this is the first season that I have seen this. And, um, and, I, and I bought this. You could wrap a, 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 a little small package in it. But it's long enough to go around the bottom. It didn't go all all the way around. I could have bought two rolls, but I just didn't think it was necessary. But um, what I did, I have another uh, another um, roll of ribbon. Now this, you have to be careful with this because, and you'll see, I did not use it in the bow because sometime, you know, we know that this is inexpensively made ribbon, but this kind of you have to be careful using it because it will come apart. If you pull on this very hard, it'll come apart. I had to be very careful when I tied the knot, but I, I just, oh, I just fell in love with this. But I didn't use it in the bow. I tried, but it was whenever I was trying to fluff the bow, it was kind of pulling apart. So, but I just totally am in love with this. So that's why I wrapped it around my package and put the tails. Okay, I was real careful with it, and I was able to do that. So that's where I got in another different kind of ribbon, okay? I tied my knot very carefully, and y'all, I put just a tip. My, my knot wanted to kind of stick up in the air. I put just a day of a hot glue under there and just held it down and made it flat. So that made it flat, and now this kind of poofed up is what I wanted, and I'm just real happy with the look that I have there. And y'all, I get questions all the time. How in the world do you attach your bow to your ribbon? If you wanted to, but this is going to get covered up with, with your loops. Sometime I'll even, if I'm really having an OCD day, I will actually even hot glue that down. But that's up to you. Now, what you want to do is take your beautiful bow. There's your piece of wire. See where the knot is? There's your piece of wire. I want y'all to see this. Y'all, all you do is take that piece of wire and stick it under 
that piece of ribbon, pull it to your knot. See? See how it's sitting there? I just took two pieces of wire, went under the other two, and now I'm just going to twist it, and that's how I attach it to the package. Y'all, and I get asked this constantly. Y'all, that's all there is to it. Now, I don't cut the wire off, okay? I don't cut it because most of the people that I know take their bow off and they keep it. <laughs> Okay, so now I'm just going to roll this. I'm going to roll my piece of wire because you don't want this sticking out. You don't want anybody to get poked with wire. So I'm just going to roll it up and I'm just going to tuck it right there under my ribbon. Under my piece of ribbon that's going around. Okay, and I'm just going to tuck it right under there. There it goes. It's completely hidden. All pieces of wire are hidden. It's tucked under there. Now I'm going to come back and foo-foo that back up, and there you go. It's, there's the perfect, beautiful package. What a wow. Let's see, I'm going to have to pull the camera back just a bit or do this. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? And if y'all know me, I'm going to come, I'm going to come and foo-foo. No, that's, that's about it. I think I want that tail about right there. I'll foo-foo just a tad. But I think y'all get, get the total gist of this. Hold on just a second. Dave, can you come and lift the camera, please? This is kind of too close now. I, I need kind of an out, a pull-out pull shot. Needs to go. There we go, there we go. Now, a little a little bit more, just a little bit more. I'm, I'm cutting the top off. He's got, y'all, he's got all kind of gadgets there, but I don't know how to deal with it. There we go, okay. So there is the whole package. So there is your gift with your gorgeous bow on it. That'll get a while. <laughs> so that's it, y'all. Super, super easy to do. There you can see the entire. Let's, let's kind of swing it around. You can see it from every direction. Isn't that beautiful? If you go into a really special uh, wedding, a really special birthday gift, a baby shower, don't you just want to walk in with something like this? What a wow. Okay? That's it. Please go to my website, probothehand.com. Um, look under videos. You'll see all kind of videos. Again, never hesitate to contact me. Never hesitate to contact me. If you have a picture of a bow and you can't figure it out, all you have to do is contact me. We can talk. I'll figure it out for you. If I really love the bow, I'll even make you a video. Okie doke. Thank you all so, so very much and God bless. Have a wonderful Sunday.